Hi, sorry I haven't uh, done a video in a while. Uh, the injury to the arm isn't healing up as fast as I want. I actually have a consultation today to see if surgery is required. But while I can't work on the building, I can do little things. And the thing that I've chosen to do is actually organize all the stuff that came out of the cottage and have basically like a big barn sale here in the workshop. Uh, we actually just finished with the sale. This is actually what's left over from the sale. Uh, I'll post a few pictures of what everything looked like when I had everything set up. I wanted to do some filming on the day of the sale, but it was just so chaotic. We had about 50 people here when we opened the doors, so it was just it was just too much to do any filming. And I didn't want to also invade people's privacy. Maybe people didn't want to be filmed at a garage sale. But anyway, uh, I'll give you a look around at what's left over, and I also took some videos as I was fixing up some of the stuff that came out of the cottage, uh, mainly the movie projector and some of the cast iron, and I'll show those clips to you now, and then I'll uh, let you look at what's left here. Hey, we're out in the workshop, we're working on more of the goodies that we took out of the building. I didn't get this on film when I actually dug it out, it was actually under a pile of, uh, of other junk that I thought was all trash, but, you know, I was actually... A movie theater projectionist one of my many jobs in life so I actually do know how to operate a projector pretty decently I think I could get this one to work there's also a box of film that came with it and all of the extra parts extra bulbs extra everything for this so we'll see what we could do with it okay we gave it a quick cleaning got rid of all the little dirt dauber nests and uh, other various filth we got a motor, and we got light. So those are the two main things of getting a projector working. Let's try to, uh, I mean, that motor sounds a little rough, but uh, it's probably just because it hasn't been running so long. All right, let me get some film and see what happens. Okay, we're ready to give this a try. So what I did was I pushed forward and reverse a bunch of times. It was kind of locked up. Motor was turning, but I couldn't get the uh, reels to turn. And then I found there's a slow-mo function right here on the projector. And that acted as a gear reduction. And that broke it loose. And it looked like it was working. But without a uh, you know, projector screen set up. And it was too light out to really see. So we're going to give it a shot here. And show everybody what we got. Oh, she's locking up again. Let's try that slow-mo function. Uh, looks like we're going to have... Okay. There we go. Look at that. These probably haven't been watched in about 40 years. It was funny, in the background you could see uh, there's a Cub Cadet tractor. That's about a 69 Chevy truck. I actually found a loan document for a 69 Chevy truck out in the building as I was cleaning up today. Look at that. On the tractor. So I'm thinking that these are from, uh, this is probably footage from Pennsylvania before these people moved to South Carolina. But I don't know. We'll take a look if we see anything noticeable on the property that we can identify. But it's pretty neat that it still works. I want everybody to know that I did not look up how to thread this thing online. I decided to give myself a challenge to see if my projection skills were still any good. And thankfully, it looks like I still know how to thread a projector. Looks like we got another movie starting here. I'm hoping that none of these is like a snuff film or anything. There we go. We're on the tractor again. All right, cool. Well, we have a huge box of footage. There's probably 40 reels. Uh, some of them are going to be salvageable. Some of them are not. But, uh, yeah, kind of neat. I like it. This video here is showing damage from the Johnstown flood. I think it's around 1977. So I've actually seen a couple of these as still images in uh, photo albums that I've taken out of the cottage. So it's interesting to see it as a as a movie too. 
They're showing a, looks like along a canal or a river, destroyed houses, barns, that kind of thing. This is interesting. This is footage of people getting a lumberjack shave, which I didn't know was a thing. But they're sharpening an axe and then using it to shave this guy's face. That's, uh, that's interesting. I don't know who would volunteer for such a thing, but... Looks like the Shriners doing their thing. Yeah, the projector seems to be having a little bit more trouble with this one. Oh, geez, that made it work. All right, let me stop it. Oh, that's a looks like an old GTO or Bonneville back there. There's that Cub Cadet tractor from before. And that's the end of the film. All right, I think I'm done with these. We did find some nice cast iron pans that I found. The first time I, I opened the building, there was a couple just sitting in here. And I took them inside and cleaned them. Uh, there's a set of three. I uh, don't know uh, who they are. There's a crystal one, too. Uh, don't. I'll clean them up and uh, we'll see if there are any valuable ones. I doubt it. They, they look pretty common. Okay, this is what they look like after they've come out of the fire. The only thing I've done at all is taken a rag while they were still a little warm and gave them a dusting. So the fire is not going to touch the rust. And a couple of these, especially this Griswold here, it's going to be pretty heavily pitted. But we'll see what I can do with that with a wire wheel. Uh, this one is a Griswold. Uh, the rest of them, it's not bad. Just a, uh, you know, 10 inch skillet made in the USA. So it looks like a set of those. And then this last one, which actually looks pretty old. The older ones tend to be a little thinner, I've noticed. So it's stamped with, it looks like an 8 on the top handle, and a 4 on the underneath side. That one's a little warm, so probably should have picked that up with the, with the rag. All the cast iron cleaned up. Uh, I sprayed it with the greaser, but before I do the seasoning, I'll uh, wash it off with soap, water, and a Scotch Brite, and that should take care of that. All right, time to go season them. Okay, they're all seasoned. So what I do is clean them up. I put a thin coating of vegetable oil, and I baked them for, at 400 degrees for one hour, and I did that twice. So, once they're, when they're bare, you usually have to do it multiple times to get that nice black coating back onto them. But they'll be good usable pans. I don't think any of them are too terribly valuable. But somebody might actually just want to reuse it as a pan. After doing that process, though, it's really nice because now you're not worried at all about cooking in these again. It's a completely new surface, and however filthy they were when we started, they're completely rehab now. Now we sold a lot of stuff. Uh, I was expecting to actually sell more. Um, there's a lot of good stuff left over. Um, stuff that I thought would sell for sure. And stuff that I actually I had no idea would sell. Sold very quickly. And I guess that's how it works in a garage sale. Here's the movie projector. And all the film that did not sell, obviously. A bunch of chairs, um, the big steamer. I priced this less than scrap. I was thinking easily it would sell, and uh, nobody was interested. Probably didn't want to move it. It was so heavy. Uh, this big, like, uh, 
hunting picture. I, I was thinking that was going to sell. Did not. Um, a lot of the pots and pans did sell. The cast iron all sold. But like that cool old pressure cooker, that, that didn't sell. Surprising. And uh, so this is what's left of the vintage clothing. A couple of good pieces left. I mean, this old graphic tee is cool, but uh, most of the vintage clothing, other than the hunting and fishing stuff, which I was sure was going to sell, and it did not. Also, what didn't sell, vintage fabric. I was thinking again, vintage fabric, vintage clothes. People could make vintage clothes out of vintage fabric. Nobody was interested. And, yeah, nobody was interested in any of the sewing machines. Now, I did scrap most of the rusty old garbage sewing machines and this is a bunch of kitchen supplies that are left i'm going to donate a large portion of what's left here to habitat for humanity they should be here maybe in the next couple days to pick things up and uh we did save a bunch of stuff that we are going to reuse so i'll give you a look at what we're planning on reusing so this old hoosier cabinet these old steel cabinets, those were all salvaged. Uh, you know, and there's just odds and ends. All right, well, that does it for this video. Hopefully I get some good news from the doctor and we can get back to work on the cottage soon. Thanks for watching.